In this video, we will look at the static methods in Java. We will also look at the math class, which has multiple static methods that we can look at as an example. We will start by defining static methods and how to use them. We will look also at static um, class data. We'll look at the math class and we'll explore some of the um, data that we have, sta static data that we have in that math class, including pi and e. We'll look at some examples of methods in the math class, like the absolute method, the square root method, the power method, the round method, and the minimum and maximum methods. So far, when we wanted to use methods, we needed to create an object of the class to be able to use these methods in that class. Static methods are different. We also call them class methods. And we call them class methods because they belong to the class. And we do not need to create an object or instantiate an object to be able to call them. So we call them without instantiating an object. And they will provide us with quick one-time fun functionality that we can use in our program. For example, popping up a dialog box or executing a math function. To know that a method is static, you'll find in the API for that class the keyword static before the return type. So if we wanted to call the static method, we will use the dot notation that we used before. But instead of using the object reference dot the method name, we'll be using the class name dot the method name. So static methods, we do not need to create objects of the class to be able to use them. We can just directly use the class name dot the method name. If that method takes any arguments, we'll be passing them in the parentheses of, these, uh, of that method. Now, since methods are not the only members of our classes, we usually also have data items, we might be able to find some static class data. If we wanted to access that data element that is static, we can use also the class name dot the st static data name. So if you have a static data element in our class, we can use the class name dot that elements name. So let's look at an example of a class in Java that contains static elements. The math class in Java provides us with static constants and some static methods to perform some common calculations. The math class is actually part of the java.lang package, so we do not need to import it into our program to be able to use it. Any class that is part of the java.lang package will be available in your class without the need to import that class. For example, the string class that we used before, we did not need to import anything in our program because it was part of the java.lang package. The math class provides us with two static constants that we can use in our calculations, pi, which has the value of pi, and e, which is the base of the natural logarithm. So if I wanted to print the value of pi, I can use my system.out.print line and inside my parentheses, I will use the class name dot the constant name, so math.py. Now remember, constants are all uppercase, so that p and i are both in uppercase. If I wanted to print the value of e, I'll use the same system.out.print line, and in the parentheses, the class name math.e, and again, e will be in uppercase. So let's try it that in Eclipse. Let's say that I want to calculate the area of a circle. So I'm going to create a variable, double, and this variable will hold the radius, and let's store in it the value 5. I'm going to create another variable, double, that will store the area. And the area is basically the value of pi multiplied by r squared. So math dot pi multiplied by r, multiplied by r. If I print it out, system.out.println, and I print the area, I should get the result of that equation. So notice I did not need to print three or type 3.1415, or whatever the value is pi is, because we can get the value of pi directly from the math class. So the math class provides me with the constant value pi. So if I run this program, I will get the result, which is 78.53, etc. The math class also provides us with static methods that will allow us to perform some common calculations. So for example, if I wanted to calculate the radius squared, instead of multiplying the radius by itself, I can use the power method, which will allow me to have the radius 
raised to the power 2. So the base raised to the exp. We can also find or calculate the square root of a number using the sqrt method or square root method. We can also find the natural logarithm or the absolute value of a number. So let's try these methods in Eclipse. So instead of multipl multiplying r by itself, I can replace that by math dot power. And I want r raised to the power 2. So let's try to run it, save it and run it and see if we have the same result. And we actually got the same exact result. If you wanted, for example, to print the square root of the area instead of the area, I can use the square root method, so math.sqrt. And then in the parentheses, I will have the area. So that will print the square root of the area instead of the total area. Another method available in the math class is the round method. And the round method allows you to get rid of the fraction part of your numbers. So it will take a double as an argument, and it will return back a long value. The long is an, is an integer data type, but it's bigger than the int data type. So it will take 8 bytes in the memory instead of 4. How does the round work? Any fractional part that is less than 0.5 will be rounded down. Any fractional part that is 0.5 or above will be rounded up. So let's try it in Eclipse. Instead of printing out the square root of the area, let's actually print the rounded value of that area. So instead of SQRT, I'm going to replace that with round. Let's save and see what happens. Notice I'm getting back 79, so we actually rounded up because the previous value was 78 point something. And we rounded it up to 79. Notice I do not have a decimal point in here, not even decimal point with zero because the return type is a long. Now remember, long is bigger than an integer. So if I wanted to store the result in an integer, we will get the error. So if I tried math dot round with that area, we'll actually get an error. Notice I have this red underline, which will tell me that there is a type mismatch. We cannot convert from long to an integer. The last two methods we will look at in this video are the min and max methods. From their name, they, they are used to get the minimum of two numbers or the maximum of two numbers. So the min method will take two arguments, two numbers. They could be doubles, floats, integers, or longs. And it will return the smaller of these two numbers. The return type will be of the same data type of these arguments. Same thing with the max method. It will take two numbers, and it will return the larger of these two numbers. So let's try these methods in Eclipse. I'm going to create an integer called a, and I'm going to store the value 9 in it. I'm going to create another integer, and let's call it b, and we'll store the value 7 in it. Now, if I wanted to find the minimum of these two numbers, I can use the min method. So if I wanted to print the minimum of these two numbers, I can use system.out.print line. And then I'm going to use the min method, which is in the math class. So math dot min. And we will pass a and b. So since b, which is 7, is less than a, which is 9, we'll be printing out the value 7. So let's run and see if that's what we get. And that's exactly what we got. If we try max instead of min, it should print out the value of a, which is 9. Now, both the min and max method only accept two numbers. But what if we had another integer called c, and we wanted to find the largest of these three numbers instead of two numbers? What we can do, we can actually find the maximum value of the first two numbers, and then compare that maximum value with the third number. So I'm going to create another integer, and let's call it max for now. And we will store in it math dot max and the largest of these two numbers a and b now what i can do and i can compare the value of max that we got between a and b and compare it with c do not get, get confused between the method max and the variable max this is a variable i just created 
So this could be of any name, so max of two, for example. So max of two numbers. And then we can compare it with the last number, which is C. Remember, since I changed the name in there, I need to change it in the print statement. So the first step, I compared A and B, found the maximum value between these two. I stored it in another variable, called it max of two. And then I compared the max maximum of these two numbers with C. So if we run this, we should get the maximum value of these three numbers, which is A, which was the value nine.